mostly drum for other bands right now. Um, I'm not as creative at the moment, but uh, lately it's been uh, Cyclone 9, uh, Imperative Reaction, Information Society, and I could probably go on. There's a number of groups that I, I drum with aside from my MX. And I front an electronic rock project called Bullet Hype. So um, we would like to talk to you about touring live exciting to be touring for Russia specifically now and the first question is um, how do you prepare for a tour usually is this something that you bring with you all the time like um, perhaps uh, a routine that you do before you go on tour go ahead yeah as far as um preparing for a tour i mean aside from just practicing and, and you know trying to have a lot of endurance by bicycling and things like that uh, uh, yeah, it's mainly trying to stay healthy and focused, honestly, and just, you know, practicing the songs, just being open to being able to tweak things, like once I, once we're on the road, because if something's not quite working out, we'll, we'll uh, make some changes, but, but yeah, mainly just uh, staying, staying in shape, uh, both with the drums and physically. Obviously, I so. suppose that's quite physically challenging. Yeah, I mean, if you want to, I mean, I think that the IMX shows are pretty energetic. So if you, if you need, so you need to have like, you know, a lot of endurance. So I think, I think doing that, that sort of training is good. Yeah. Okay. And what about you? Well, I think you pretty much nailed it with that. So it's really important that you know to just to prepare your body not only physically but also you know mentally just uh, for for the just being not on the road like life on the road is is quite challenging. Um, and then you know add an hour and a half physical workout every day. Um, it's great, it's, it's great, I absolutely love it. It's, it's a way to release all of your energy, you know, um, that ha has been pent up for other reasons. Um, one reason or the next other. Uh, <laughs> and uh, anything anything that I do to actually prepare for it, yeah, it's just, um, you know, study the songs. I do a lot of sound design. Um, you know, all, all of my sounds that I use on the synth are always, um, they're always evolving. Um, so I never do the same I'll never do the same sounds for the same songs on uh, different tours. Okay, and since we're on the topic, I would like to ask you both, what is your favorite song to perform live, or what is the most difficult song to perform live? Um, I think my favorite is probably No Maker Made Me. That, that, that's always one that I look forward to playing the most. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the drumming in there is like, it's got a lot of elements that I enjoy within you know, I guess the the drumming model. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, there's you know, it's got a deep groove, and then at the end, I'm going crazy and playing double bass and all sorts of stuff like that. It's just kind of a powerful song. It is. And then the the most challenging, honestly, sometimes the ballads are the more challenging where I'm not playing as much. Um, but you have to come in at seven. But you have to, you know, keeping a really soft, steady groove within like. A theater or like a larger venue, um, right. it's it, you know that that has its own challenges. To be honest, okay. it's kind of like just balancing on a unicycle or something like that, trying to be very, <laughs> very soft all of a sudden instead of brute force hitting. <laughs> it must be quite difficult with all the adrenaline as well to know like when when to pull back. Yeah, yeah. You're like you know, once you're doing a really hard hitting song like like uh, No Maker, for example, and then like going into something like Power and the Glory, it's like, right. oh, your, your, your adrenaline's going so high that it's like, boy, I really need to back off for this one. Yeah. Um, just because the song doesn't call for it. Right, and you don't need to be like freaking out, like, ah, I'm yeah. playing Power and the Glory, you know what I mean? Like, just, it just wouldn't be right. <laughs> very much all, yeah. Roller coaster, I would say. And what about you, so what would you uh, no, like? no, maker's the funnest, I okay, think. Okay, really? Oh, just, that's I, interesting. I, I really enjoy that one. one, yeah. I enjoy that one because it, 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 it follows directly from our opening song, Alive and New Light. And it's just a completely different vibe, and it's very hard-hitting, and it's got a really strong message. Um, the most challenging one for me to play isn't challenging uh, playing-wise, but because I use five different patches in one song, uh, that I'm very busy. Um, this song called Sorrow. 
I use five different patches on in different areas and it goes back and forth so I just kind of have to remember where everything is. Um, I think I have the most fun playing note maker maybe on a physical level but on like a synth sort of um, synth intellect level I think Sorrow is the best for me. And if I were to ask you what is your favourite bullet point song? That is always going to be up to the neck. Okay. Up to the neck, definitely, just because it's got a lot of electronic vibes in it, um, right. you know, electronic drums, and then it just explodes into this sort of like prog meets a uh, really dirty electronic um, sort of story. That it's uh, this journey that we go on, um, and I love uh, the just the way that it has evolved live as well. It's very different from the album. Yeah, it is. I've seen it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. Okay, um, what are some of the best tour moments that you've got? Like, um, perhaps uh, some memorable um, shows or experiences that you can think of straight up like that. I mean, it's easy to say Moscow because because Moscow is just such an amazing city to perform in. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, Eastern Europe. For that matter, just the the, the, really? the way the fans, you know, are, I don't know, they're they're so enthusiastic that very it's cute, very you. infectious. Uh, you could be dragging ass all day long, and then when you hit the stage, and that crowd's giving that kind of energy, you're you have no choice but to have that kind of energy right back. So yeah. so yeah, I I'd say that as far as you know the, you know as far as the shows go. Um, but we've had a lot of memorable experiences. Um, you know, I remember when we saw Anvil in <laughs> Thessaloniki. <Wow. laughs> I mean, there, there's these, you know, events that, you know, that you'll get to go to at like, you know, the night before if you have a day off. So, I mean, I remember that just being a really good time. We were in good. Greece and, you know, going to Finland for the first time just because my, you know, yeah, my family from immigrated from, from yeah, my family immigrated, a, oh, really? like extended, like, you know, grandparents kind of thing, or you know, great grandparents. They came from uh, from Finland, so actually getting to go there because that was a dream of my dad's. So that was kind of nice. The first time we went to Finland, so that was cool. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, that's quite interesting to know. Yeah. And what about you? So, what would be your favorite part? Most memorable. Uh, you know, the place, places that we've played, I think um, I enjoy Eastern Europe the best. Um, okay. Just the as just touching base on what you said. I mean, he nailed it basically. Like. You know they just are so so giving it, it's almost as if you know they they really really appreciate music so much live music especially so much more than some other areas in the world um, mostly because they're probably not exposed so much to the type of music that we do so it's um I don't know it, there's just this appreciation I think for live music and it is very infectious it's you know there's the screams are louder the the enthusiasm is all there and yeah we we feed off of that exactly um, Mary Luna, I think, was uh, one of okay. my favorite favorite festivals we've ever played. I think we totally nailed that one. <laughs> yeah, that was killer. It was great. We had like all these bands that we knew different members from just on the side stage there, so it was cool to have that support as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of off tour moments or, or off uh, off stage yeah. moments that we've had as well. That's uh, that's quite fun. Um, yeah, and Bill was good. We've been in a number of of interesting places. Uh, you know, we were at that. Uh, that actually <laughs> <laughs> I'm like we can't talk about all no, this stuff <laughs> no. you don't have to. <laughs> yeah um, I mean it's just it's never ending really it's, it's, it's just a lot of fun okay thank you and um, another question I would like to ask is well you've got amazing fans and they give you a lot of presents I'm sure do you have any memorable presents that you've got from from tours from different experiences uh, your favorites maybe some because I've seen a lot of artwork mm. uh, yeah I'll, I'll, both of you actually, you especially. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know what, honestly, like, there are, we love everything that, that is given to us. You know, if, if, if we become that inspiration for somebody's art, that is the best feeling because it's, it's inspired somebody else to tap into their, crea uh, their creative mind, um, you know, while we're just doing what we do. And uh, I think that that is the best part about it. Um, there's a few, there's a few fans that are really, really fucking good at drawing. <laughs> that um, that you know, every time we get something from them, it's just it's a total gift. Um, I have a few fans that have tattoos that are uh, of either of our signatures, 
Or, no, of, or, or of me, yes, yes, there's, there's one girl in particular that's, uh, that's tattooed my face onto her, which I think is the utmost dedication. I and I think she's not. here, and she, she asked is. me to tell you hi. Oh, lovely. Is, uh, yeah, Tatiana. She is Tatiana, yeah, she's yeah. here yeah. tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, going to yeah. be loads she's, of fun. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And um, I was going to not ask you a little bit about your image. When you go on stage, do you pick your own look, or do you discuss it like... With the rest of the band, what's the idea of? You've got like very inspiring looks. Uh, oh, thank you. All the time, and what is? Yeah, like how do you talk about it? And, and you're very like dark and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, I'll take this one. Um, <laughs> you know, we every time with IMX, every time that there's a, an album cycle, Chris comes to us with, "Hey, this is kind of the mood that okay. you know, th this is the mood that." we or that that he sort of thought of as he was creating the album he comes to us with usually a mood board and he's like this is kind of the vibe take what you want from it and then we're kind of free to do what what we do i mean your your uniform is basically your your chest <laughs> the flowing locks of hair yeah yeah that's <laughs> what he looks right <laughs> <in there. laughs> like, where's we are on it yeah i yeah i mean the <laughs> It's hard, I guess, when you're playing drums to have any sort of um, stage attire, especially if you're going to be using a lot of your body. Uh, you know, athletic wear. I mean, it's it's funny how much athletic wear. At least I can vouch for Chris and myself what what we'll wear. I mean, obviously, I think he puts a lot more, you know, into it being a front man, and he's able to, you know, kind of wear cooler outfits and so forth. But you know, being behind the drums. Uh, Functionality is is key, yeah. and and uh, so but but yeah, I mean I I, I um I'm trying to think uh yeah I mean Sammy basically answered it. Chris will come to us with some ideas, and then we'll just sort of go with it. Um, but it's all you. So we'll yeah, yeah, we do, we all yeah. do. We're, we're able to do it ourselves. Like so, sometimes I've, I've I've been known to do something, and, and Chris is like, mm, it's not really the vibe I'm going for. Okay. So it, you know, there there is definite um, artistic direction. Um, he's he's always very keen to let us know if it's not really working. Um, more more in my case than yours. <laughs> but um, you know, at, at, for for this one, you know, with Alive and New Light, you know, um, Chris has moved to the desert, and so I think he's he's drawn a lot of inspiration from nature and. The Native Americans, and so I think that's kind of reflective of some of the, the uh, looks that I've done on this tour. Okay, thank you very much. Next question would be about your inspiration. Both of you, I would really like to hear an answer to that, and that could be books, uh, music, maybe movies, whatever it is. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, music, definitely all the stuff that I grew up listening to. I mean, that that is, I go back to that constantly. Um, I mean, there's contemporary bands that really inspire me. Lately, it's been a group from Iceland called Glorocker. Um, very difficult to pronounce. G-L-E-R-K-U-R. Um, but anyway, uh, that band in particular, I think that they really tapped into a vibe that I can identify with. And then aside from that, honestly, um, certain animal rights activists, uh, certain scientists and... and um, could you name uh, a few, perhaps? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, well, I mean, certain people within the, I guess, plant-based nutrition world that, you know, are huge inspirations to me that I follow them constantly, like Dr. McDougall, Dr. Greger, um, Dr. Neil Barnard, who does the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. These people are my heroes and people that I draw a lot of inspiration from. Thank you. Even though it has nothing to do with music. It's just some, it's a huge part of, I guess, It's about in. inspiration, it could be anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what so. about you? Uh, me, I would have to say, um, you know what I find inspiring is when, you know, I'm, I'm just doing what it is that I love. Um, you know, I, I play music, and when somebody else finds inspiration from that, that inspires me even more. Okay. So you know, uh, for example, you know, if fans will message me and be like, "Hey, I've just I've just picked up learning how to play the synth because you've inspired me." It's like, oh, I want I want to be better mm -hmm. now because that's I remember that was me looking up at uh, people that I used to look up to uh, as a teenager, being like, "Wow, this person does this. I really want to do that." And now, uh, on on a very small level, I am that person for somebody else, and that inspires me the most, I think. Um, but. Yeah, music, um, kind of tinkering with, with technology, that really kind of inspires me. Um, 
if I get really obsessed with something, I have to make sure I know everything about it, uh, which is okay. why sound design is something I like, because <laughs> it's never ending. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Okay, I would like to ask that question anyway. So, uh, what charities do you support? I know that uh, Europe Rock Foundation is, um, well, Chris is doing this whole thing. Do you, what do you think about that? Do you support it? Maybe there are some other charities you support. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, mental health is such a stigma in some places still. And uh, I think, you know, I'll, I'll be happy to speak for both of us. You know, mental health is something that, uh, it's, it's a part of, of all of us and it needs to be exercised just as much as like the physical body does. I think it's extremely hard to tap into that um, for some people and so with charities like the U Rock Foundation and uh, other sort of mental health awareness um, avenues that you know it's really really bringing light to this to the subject and letting people know that it's okay to not be okay and it's okay to talk about it and vulnerability is not weakness um, and I think that it's very powerful. So yeah, I totally stand behind it. Okay. I mean, I'll you know I'll add to that by saying that I also I mean as far as other charities and so forth that that I'm involved with, I'd say Lux Pauls. I've been involved with that for a very long time, which is a very local thing to where I live, um, and we deal with uh, uh, feral the feral cat population within LA. Uh, so we try to do. Uh, spay and neutering of, of feral cats. We try to adopt out the kittens and so forth, and we coordinate with the communities of people that are feeding the cats and so forth so that we can lower the number of, of uh, feral cats that are you know, struggling on the streets of LA. So that's, that's something I'm personally involved with when I'm back at home. That's brilliant. And so, okay, one last question. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about parodies as a comedy genre? And uh, how would you feel about someone doing a parody of you? Well, like, like Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> sort of like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> brilliant. That was my first album that I ever owned, so I mean, I enjoy a parody. Um, God, I would love somebody to do that. I'd love somebody to do that for Bullet Height. That would be hilarious. Really? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So please. Someone might. <laughs> so please, if anybody, uh, if anybody out there wants to do a Bullet Height parody, please it. send it my way. Oh, that would be <laughs> do it. That means that, that means that you know you need to learn how to play my songs. Uh oh. No, no, because if it's a parody, I can kind of have creative oh, okay, justice. Oh, yeah, I see. With, with, um, and I, I think I might say, you know, like everybody in this band, Chris has an amazing sense of humor. I think he would think it's very funny. <laughs> okay, so you like that. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for um, doing this. Thank you for doing the interview. Perhaps you want to say something to our viewers as the last word. Yeah, I can't wait to see you tonight, Moscow. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank Thanks, you very Moscow. much. Thank you. <laughs>